Hello everyone and welcome to Strategy. This is a series of videos explaining business strategy. Today it's episode 6, the activity system. Do you remember our business model? Well, previously we covered the product offering. Today we'll be covering the activity system. One of the ways to understand the activity system is with Porter's value chain. But an activity system in general is a set of tasks that are interlinked with a specific aim. Important to the business model is the revenue model in red on the slide. How is revenue generated? Have you wondered, for example, how many things are for free today? Well, free is a funny word. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So the revenue model must be earning cash from somewhere else. Always wonder, if it's free, what is the revenue? The standard revenue model, where you don't pay for stuff, is advertising. For example, you all have Facebook, but you don't pay for it. No, that's wrong. You actually pay for it. You pay for it with advertising. There are other revenue models which are more complex, but that's probably a simple one. So the activity system will be formed by key activities which determine the manufacturing costs, determine how value is created and what is the value proposition and most importantly determine the cost structure. All these activities need to be measured and when they are measured you are able to understand what your margin is. Your margin will be the difference between the total revenue and the cost of carrying out all the activities in your activity system. So we can define an activity system as an integrated set of value creation processes leading to the supply of a product or service. As I said before, the standard way of measuring the activity system that is used in business is the value chain. But the notion of an activity system is different from the value chain. If you're baking cupcakes to eat it for tea today, that's an activity system. Porter's value chain is perhaps the most frequently used system to analyze and measure the different activities. Next, I will try to explain, as simply as I possibly can, how is the activity system measured by the value chain. In order to understand the value chain, let's play a game. Let's imagine that you won the lottery and you have to choose between these two value chains, the ones that are on the screen. Which one would you choose and why? I'm going to give you a second to think. Now, if you chose wisely, you chose the one at the bottom. Why? because the value chain is an overlapping figure over another one. So the pinky figure is the one underneath reflecting all the revenue, whereas the one on top, the red one, is the cost of generating that revenue. Is the pink bit you see from the figure underneath. And the value chain at the bottom has a bigger area of margin. That's why it's a more desirable value chain. Let's imagine that you won the lottery again and now you're an expert in value chains so you can choose the one that is best, the one in the bottom again. Why? Because the blue area, which is the margin in the value chain, is bigger than the blue area of the value chain on top. And that's it. It's simple, isn't it? Now, let's review what the margin is to make sure that everyone understands what we're talking about. The margin is the difference between the revenue and the cost. It's generally measured in percentage. So products that have a high margin have a high difference between the revenue and the cost. By now, I'm sure you can see that products with higher margin are products for which the product offering is extremely valuable to the customer because they're willing to pay 
a high price compared to the cost of producing that product. Let's get now into the details of the value chain. The value chain is formed of two types of activities, those activities that are central to the manufacturing or the production of the service, which are in colors at the bottom. They are the inbound logistics. How do you procure goods that you can transform into other goods? Operations, outbound logistics, how you distribute these things. How do you market them and how do you sell them? And finally, the service. You can relate to this or not. These have to do with the normal operation of business. Now, there are things that support this, like the infrastructure, like human resources, like technology, and generally these activities have nothing to do with the day-to-day -day operation. Now, as you can see, the dark green is the difference between all the costs and all the revenue. The activities that have to do with developing the business are the primary activities, and the ones that support the business are the support activities. As simple as that. I've always found the value chain a little bit boring. And that's why I've used as many colors as I possibly can to explain to you how the value chain works. Let's look first at the primary activities. The inbound logistics refer to the activities associated with receiving, storing and disseminating inputs, warehouses and so on. Then operations are the activities that relate to transforming these inputs into final products. Outbound logistics will be the physical distribution of products to buyers. And marketing and sales is pretty obvious, is what you do to make the buyers buy your product. Finally, the service is the service that you give associated with the product and the post-sales service. The support activities are kind of self-explanatory. They have to do with funding the operations. They have to do with managing the staff in the operations. They have to do with procurement of inputs that are relevant and at the best possible price. And the firm infrastructure, the buildings and the networks and the factories and all that. Now, I'm going to leave you with one thought or one question if you want. Will every company have all these activities? No. Today, many companies have fragmented value chains. Let's take, for example, Apple. And I'm sure you're looking at these slides with some device that perhaps is Apple. All the operations, all the inbound logistics, all the outbound logistics is done by a third party. The only thing that Apple does is the marketing and sales and the service. So they choose to have a fragmented value chain. Take a minute to think of other companies that you may know or read of. And how is their value chain? Is it fragmented? Do they do the whole thing? Or do they just do a couple of activities within the value chain? Thanks for listening and see you in the next episode.